Hey guys, this is Adam Garcia with Shortstop Studios, and today we're going to be going over my raw post workflow for videos such as Yosemite and Zion. So a lot of you have been asking, what were my steps uh, for post-production and color grading for videos such as Yosemite and Zion? So I wanted to go ahead and put that out for you and show you exactly what I did. So let's hop on the computer back here and take a look at the steps that I took in DaVinci and Premiere to get the looks that I did on Yosemite and Zion. So my basic workflow consists of bringing my raw DNG files into DaVinci Resolve to then convert them to proxies where I can then begin to cut the proxies in Premiere, which is my personal native editor. However, this can work in Avid or Final Cut as well. Once my cut is ready, I take the files back into DaVinci Resolve to go ahead and do my color grading. And then I take it one last time back into Premiere to add some final touches, such as Warp Stabilizer, Denoiser, and Letterbox. And then at that point, I export from Premiere and I have my final product. So if you go to your Blackmagic RAW files, you can see that in the folders there are DNG files. Each of these folders is basically one shot comprised of a bunch of still DNG files. We're going to take these files into DaVinci Resolve. Log into my username and start a new project by double clicking on Untitled Project. I'm going to navigate to my Media tab and import the RAW DNG files. Now as you can see, DaVinci is interpreting the raw DNG files as sequences. Bring your media into the media pool by selecting the thumbnail and double clicking, or hit select all, right click, and add into media pool. Now that we have our media, you are ready to convert the raw DNG files into temporary proxies for editing. Next, we're going to go from our media tab to our edit tab. Create a new timeline. Navigate to Media Pool and go ahead and drag all your clips down into the timeline to begin the export. Okay, next we're going to save our DaVinci project. Now you can navigate to the Deliver tab so you can begin exporting your proxies. Here we're going to select Easy Setup and Export for Final Cut Pro. Regardless if you're exporting to Premiere, Avid, or Final Cut Pro, this is the option you're going to select. Now you can choose your codec. I typically go with Apple ProRes 422LT because it's a nice compressed codec and it's easy for Premiere to read. Next, choose your destination folder for the proxies. Make sure all your clips are selected to render by right clicking on the timeline and clicking select all. And now you're ready to start your export. Click add job and start render. Now we can navigate to your proxies and send them to your native editor, in my case Premiere. And very quickly, I'm going to perform a mock edit for your demonstration. Once your cut is complete, you can now send your files back to DaVinci. Click File and Export XML. This is what you'll take to DaVinci to begin the coloring process. And now go ahead and save your edit project. Minimize this and open DaVinci and import your new XML. When you initiate your import, DaVinci will give you a load XML window. This is important. You must unselect automatically import source clips into Media Pool. This ensures your edit in DaVinci relinks to the raw files and not the proxies. Now at this point, we have our edit and raw files in DaVinci and are ready to color grade. Okay, so I'm going to select this image to work on so that you guys can follow along. Start by selecting your master settings. This will give you access to your color space options. On the Decode Settings drop-down menu, select Clip, which will allow you to custom grade the selected clip. Now we're going to revert to our BMD Film Flat Film Profile from the camera. As you can see, our waveform is flattened and we now have a lot more room to work with. You can also choose to change your white balance or leave as shot. I personally like to work in layers, similar to Photoshop or Illustrator, so I'm going to add a serial node which is similar to a blank layer in which I can work on rather than the original image. The first thing I want to do is check out my waveform. If your scopes window isn't open, go to view, scopes, and on. Now we're going to make this thing look awesome. We're now going to navigate to log mode on your color wheel window. We're going to start with using our master offset control to center our waveform for proper exposure. 
With our waveform centered, we can now use the contrast to expand the waveform. I've noticed that 1.3 is typically a sweet spot with my shooting style and is what I typically set my contrast to. Now use the pivot control to finely tune your spectrum. Next I'm going to bring my shadows down to the base of the waveform without clipping. Center your midtones and push your highlights. At this point your waveform is looking healthy and you're properly exposed. Now you need to saturate your image. However, I've found an alternative to using the saturation tool, so we're going to create a new serial node. Locate your RGB mixer and boost the red, green, and blue values in each output. Now you can stop here, however, I personally add a fourth serial node and apply the same settings again to the RGB mixer for a second layer of saturation to make those colors really pop. Our shot's looking great, however, we are now peaking in our waveform. Going back to the second serial node, I'm going to use the gain control to collapse our waveform slightly and use the pre-existing tools I've shown you to fine tune the image. At this point, your edit and coloring is complete. However, I go one step further by sending a final XML from DaVinci to Premiere to apply denoisers, letterboxes, and stabilizers. Once everything is perfect, I set up the export to match sequence settings and you're finished. I hope this video gave you a little bit of clarity on how to use DaVinci and work with raw files and achieve the colors that I did with videos like Yosemite and Zion. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe down below and go shoot some